Abraham Lincoln said, Abraham Lincoln, maybe this is a good one, right? I mean, maybe it's a good quote. Maybe I should listen. Abraham Lincoln said, if I only had an hour to chop down a tree, I'd spend the first 45 minutes sharpening my axe. Isn't that true? Prepare, prepare, always prepare. Prepare to do good things. Prepare to do your yoga. This is a one hour long yoga practice. And today, it's your yoga. It's your day. You only have one day today. One twenty-fourth of it, spend it on your mat. And I guarantee the rest of your day will be so much better. Yoga does work. Hi, I'm Jan. This is 316 Yoga. This is Piper. That's Bonnie. This is your one-hour practice from home. Every day we practice here live on Facebook and on YouTube. One hour, solid, no breaks, no changes, no cuts, no edits. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> and we just practice together from the privacy of your own home. From the privacy of your own home, wear what you want. Take the breaks when you need to. Nobody's watching. Don't be intimidated and don't be hard on yourself. Do what is right for your body, as the bottom of our screen says. Always do what's right for your body. Do what feels good. That's the ticket. Don't hurt yourself. If something hurts, back out of it. Take it to a lesser percentage or skip it all together. Not every pose is right for every body and not every pose you can do every single day. Take it easy and just, you know, sharpen. That's the word today. Sharpen your yoga skills. Sharpen means to increase alertness and vigilance. Just wake up, sharpen your practice, pay attention to how it's working in your life. For example, are you finding that you have more comfort in your knees? Are you finding that you're stronger in your body from doing all the planks? Do you sleep better? That's another benefit of yoga. And how is your balance? It will improve if you stick with the yoga. So stick with it. That's it. That's my pep talk for this morning. Props you're gonna need for your practice. Two yoga blocks. Buy them, find them. They're not expensive. You can get them online. You can have them for tomorrow's practice. An eye shade and a little towel come in handy. I've also got the strap here. You never know when you might want to use the strap. Have a strap or a belt or a dog leash or a jump rope, whatever is around your house. Have it handy. Also, we've used resistance fans in the past. We're going to use that today just for a little bit. If you don't have any of these props, don't sweat it. Just come to your mat and have some fun. All right. It's a Wednesday. We're going to start seated on our mats. So come to, oh, have water too. So come to whatever is comfortable for you seated on your mat. I'm going to come into a Sukhasana pose. For Sukhasana, bend the knees and then bring one foot on up on top of the opposite knee. And if you want and if you can, bring the other foot up onto the opposite leg. I can't. I'm not sweating it. I'm letting it go. I'm doing what I can with what I've got. All right, so nestle in, settle in. Maybe you're not even in Sukhasana, it's fine. Have your legs long, have a little less of an intense crisscross in the legs. It's all about doing what you can and just coming back to it every single day as you get stronger and more flexible and more mobile. And that is what our emphasis is today, flexibility and mobility. All right, so you're seated in your Sukhasana pose. Put your hands on your knees. Close your eyes, lengthen up, bring your shoulders back more over your hips, stress number. As you come into your practice today, are you stressing out on a scale of one to five, one to 10, where do you lie? Give it a number and we'll come back to it. Close your eyes, hands on your knees, lengthen up and sigh it out, breathe it out. Filter out the outside world and its craziness. Filter it out, let it go and just focus inward. Big breath in, 
big sigh in, breath out. As you sigh it out, let your shoulders even soften. So if you're in Sukhasana, it's also called easy pose, not a good name for it because I don't think it's especially easy, but think about your hips. You're externally rotating them. You're opening them up. Breathe. Just let it be. Be still, be quiet. And let's work on our necks a little bit while we're here. If it feels good for you, just circle your neck around. Let it pivot on your shoulders. <coughs> circle in one direction then the other if circles don't feel good take them slower no rush no hurry or just lengthen up through the crown of your head just come into your space you know block out the outside world there's too much stimulation out there too much going on turn off the news and just be quiet so move your head around to whatever feels good and then come back to a stillness at the midline of the body. Are your eyes closed? Kind of nice to close your eyes. I'll talk you through what you got to do. Lengthen up and soften up in the shoulders. Now turn your head, let's say to the right. Turn your head to the right. And then take your left fingers, your left two piece fingers, and then place them on your jaw. And then give them just a little bit of a nudge, not a whole lot, just a little bit of pressure. And turn your head a little bit more to the right. Look over your shoulder maybe, or close your eyes. Soften in both shoulders. And just enjoy this turn, this twist, this movement, this full range of motion for you today in your neck. Slowly bring your head back to the midline of your body, hands down to the knees, lengthen up to find space in your spine, and then turn your head to the left. Take your right hand, peace fingers, and nudge the jaw ever so slightly as you soften in both shoulders, and just turn the head. We'll do this more with the neck too when we come into a thread the needle pose. But in that pose, you'll have the ground helping you with the neck. But just turn it now to whatever is comfortable. You've got a lot of motion in there. Find it. Slowly bring your head back to the midline of your body. Hands on your knees. Lengthen up. <sighs> Sigh it out. Let it go. Let's find either your resistance band, your little towel, or your strap to do cow face in the arms. All right, here's the deal. I'm going to use the towel. Lift one arm up overhead, holding onto the towel. Bring the other arm around behind and pull on that towel. I'm going to turn around just for a second so you can see. I can't do this really super far, but I, it is what it is, right? All right, so you bring the towel around. Bring the other hand around. Try to get the hands close to each other. And then just give the towel a tug as you send the elbow of the opposite arm up high to the sky. So that is your cow face. I'm going to come back into my Sukhasana. Tug on it. Then we say flossing the shoulders. So start to move the towel a little bit up and down. And I'm going to say hi to Esther. How are you? I just sent you something in the mail. Liz, how are you? Tammy, Lynn, Stan, Betty. Betty, I'm glad you're here. I sent you something too. Tina, Kelly, Margaret, Tim, Diane, Diane, ah. Lisa, Carol, Margaret, Steve, I'm glad you guys are here. All right, how did the flossing go? Doesn't it feel good? I mean, boy, you're really getting some motion in the shoulders there. All right, you did one side, switch it to the other. Bring the towel into the hand of the opposite arm. Send that arm up, bring the other hand around and start to give it a tug. Floss the shoulders. I got a double whammy yesterday. I got another COVID booster and I got the flu shot, so my arms are a little sore. <laughs> Life is good though, right? All right, how is this feeling? Floss the shoulders. Don't you really feel it in the tricep of the elbow that's up toward the sky? Oh, that range of motion is so important in your shoulders. Keep at it, work at it, breathe. Sharpen your skills here. Sharpen how deep you go with it. Breathe. And let's finish up. All right, so we sharpen the shoulders there. Let's take an extended mountain arms. Lift your arms up to the sky. Look up. 
look up. Fingers are reaching up to the sky. Let your chin go up to the sky too. Breathe, look up. Always good to look up. Have hope for the future, right? Lengthen. And then when you're ready, bring your fingers on down. Bring them behind your back and open up through the chest. Again, send your chin high up to the sky. Open up, little teeny back bend. And then finish, shoulders over your hips. You can use a block here. We're gonna reach forward in the arms. So just kind of a forward fold. You'll feel this in your hips, won't you? If you got the block, push it forward. No block at all, that's fine. Put your hands on the ground. Come forward as much as is comfortable for you. Think of your chest going toward the earth. Maybe push the block out farther. We're gonna hang out here for a few breaths as you just feel what you feel and just you know become alert and vigilant and thoughtful about what you're feeling in your hips now you know if it's painful you always want to come out of pain if it's just uncomfortable breathe through it deep in your breath and just realize hey i'm on the threshold of something here maybe if i just soften up in my breath and in my mind, that's the big thing, and let go of the tension in my head, maybe I can take it farther. Slowly, let's come on back up to a seated position. Shoulders over your hips, it's time to switch to the other side. Give the other hip equal time. Come out of this slowly. Oh my goodness, I feel it, don't you? All right, switch it up. Maybe crisscross to the other side. You know, however you wanna bend your knees, just put a little bit of a bend in them. A little more bend in them today than you did yesterday. Because if you don't, you're not gonna be able to do it in the future. So keep up, keep up with it. Keep up with your movement. All right, so Sukhasana on the other side. You can bring the other foot up if it works. Settle in here, hands on your knees. Lengthen up, soften up. You know, if you sigh it out through your mouth, as you exhale, you let some tension go, and that's good. Let the stress go. Big breath in, find length. Big breath out, find softness. All right, here we sit. Let's work on our necks a little bit. Do some neck circles. Just move your neck however you want. Now, do you have those little crunchies in your neck? I sure do. As long as they don't hurt, you're okay. Just move your neck. Move. Really look over your shoulder. Like you're being chased by zombies, right? It's, it's that month. It's that month where you got to think about Halloween cats and pumpkins and zombies. All right. You don't want to be a stiff-necked people. Keep turning your head. Keep circling your head around. However feels good. Pivot it on your shoulders and come to finish. Head at the midline. Let's do that twist again with the peace fingers. Send your gaze over your right shoulder. Lift your left hand up. Peace, my friends. Bring your fingers, peace fingers, to your jaw. Just a little gentle nudge. Soften in your shoulders so you got the space to turn. And let your head move a little bit more. Inhale, lengthen to find space in your neck. Exhale, twist a little deeper. Take it slow. Feel that full range of motion. No rush, no hurry. Yesterday's practice was a fast one. Our vinyasa practices on Tuesdays and Saturdays are quick. Today, we just settle in. Finish up, head back to the midline, nice and slowly, hands back to the knees, lengthen up. <sighs> Sigh it out, let it go, turn your head to the left. Right hand lifts, peace fingers here. Same thing, other side. Soften as you exhale and twist. Finish up. Come back to the midline of your body. Hands on your knees. Lengthen up. <sighs> Sigh it out. Let it go. Cow face. 
use your towel, your strap, or your resistance band, or nothing at all. If you're, I'm gonna use nothing at all. If you're using nothing at all, lift one arm up high to the sky. With the other hand, hug that elbow in so that bicep is kind of right by your ear. Bend that elbow that's up to the sky and give yourself a pat on the back. Take the other hand and bring it around down by your waist and bend the elbow greatly and reach it up, reach for the fingers. Maybe you can touch your hands. Reach and touch. Maybe you're holding on to the strap. If you're holding on to the strap, floss your shoulders. Little tugs. Feel it in the tricep of the right arm. Pull down with that left arm. Breathe. Bring your shoulders back over your hips a little bit more. And then finish. Hands come down. Take your strap and switch it out in the other arm. Other arm lifts, strap goes into it. Other arm comes around, grabs it from behind. Just make it work for you. Lots of different ways we did it today. The strap, the resistance band, no strap at all. Just get that stretch going. Hug that elbow in. Breathe, remember to breathe. And don't focus on what you can't do. Focus on what you can do. And little by little, you'll sharpen the sword and things will get more doable for you. All right, we have you flossed your shoulders. Let's finish up here. <sighs> Strap comes away. <sighs> Lengthen up. Send your arms up to the sky. Think extended mountain in the arms. Look up, look up. Arms reach up. Hold it here. Reach a little higher through your fingers. Let the arms float on down by your side and come behind your low back. Send your chest up to the sky and drive your chin up to the sky as well. Lengthen. Chin higher. Oh, don't you feel it in the front of your neck? Now my favorite part in this pose, shoulders over the hips with or without your block. Reach forward, reach forward, and enjoy the stretch here in the hips. Breathe in, breathe out. As you breathe out, think of sending that breath to the tight hip, the leg that's on top. That hip's tight, isn't it? As you reach farther, think of sending breath there. Think of really getting into what your body is capable of. Get your mind out of the way. <sighs> Let it feel how it feels. Hollow out your belly as you exhale. Maybe you can take it a little farther. Do one more big cycle of breath. And finish up. Come on back, shoulders over your hips. How are you doing? Let's uncurl, unwind, and come into a child's pose. For your child's pose, two ways to do it, or maybe you've got another way you like to do it. The classic child's pose, knees are together, big toes touch, hips back to the heels, arms down by the sides. A block can be here for your forehead to rest upon. And you can just kind of curl up into a little ball, and as you curl up into this ball, think of your tailbone going to the back of the room and the crown of your head going to the front, so your spine is nice and straight. Nice stretch in the quads, waking up the knees, shoulders away from the ears, breathe. The variation that I like to take is knees spread wide. It's a wide-legged child's pose. Big toes are still touching, hips back toward the heels. I didn't say necessarily on the heels, just back in that direction. Open up through your groin area. Forehead can come down to the blocks and your arms can reach really far to the top of your mat. Drive your tailbone more to the back of the room and lengthen through the crown of your head. I really like the cue, send your tailbone to the back of the room because when you think about it, you can kind of like do it just in your mind. You can feel it move even more to the back of the room. I'm gonna slip the block underneath my hands and push the block up to the top of the mat because I wanna get into my shoulders a little bit more. Maybe you like this today, maybe you don't like it today. Do what feels best for you. Soften in your jaws, don't clench your teeth. Deep breaths in, deep breaths out. 
Maybe you'd like to close your lips and just breathe in and out of your nose. And listen to the sound of your breath in the back of your throat, your life force, your prana. Deep breath in and deep breath out. Stay here in your child's pose. If you like, I'm going to move on to a cat-cow pose. So you've stretched it out here. Know you can come back to your child's pose anytime you want. For a cat-cow pose, let's come to a neutral tabletop. Shoulders over your wrists, knees underneath your hips. Push the tops of your feet into the ground. Push your hands with fingers spread wide into the ground. Lengthen through your tailbone and the crown of your head. Your back is super flat. Exhale, tuck your chin to your chest and your tailbone under. Push into the earth. Arch your back like that Halloween cat. Inhale, cow pose, crown of the head and tailbone lift. Think about your tailbone. How often do you do that? Tuck your tailbone as you exhale and extend your tailbone up to the sky. Imagine there's a string tied to it, pulling it up to the sky as you come into your cow. Exhale, cat, belly hollows out, tailbone tucks. Inhale, cow, lift it up. Really an important posture. Think of the movement in the low back here. Breathe. Oh, so many of us suffer low back pain. And the older you get, the more likely your chances of having back pain. And usually it manifests itself in the low back. So we're going to do some twists today. Some movements like your cat-cow that help preclude problems there. All right, finish up. Cat-cow feels so good. Let's do cat pulling its tail. Lift your right leg up, knee to about hip height. Draw your heel closer to your bottom. Dial your right hip down a little bit so both hips are equal distant to your mat. Maybe kick yourself in the bottom a little bit. Move your heel a little bit towards your bottom. As you can stay, you can stay right here if you like this. Or balance a little bit. Push into both hands. Push more into the left hand and lift the weight out of your right, or press into your right hand and remove your left hand from the mat. Reach around and capture your foot if you can. You could use a strap here if you like. Feel the left collarbone opening up. Push hard into the earth with your foundational limbs. Kick with your right foot into your left hand. Look to the left corner of your mat. Look over to the left wall. Maybe look over your left shoulder. Keep pushing hard into the ground. It makes it more doable. And then finish. Hand comes down, leg comes down. You did one side, let's do the other. Is your heart beating a little faster? Mine is. All right, start all over again. Press hard into the foundation. Lift your left leg up, up, up. Knee to about hip height. Draw the toes toward the shin. Kind of kick yourself in the bottom a little bit. Just move it here. Maybe this is where you stay. You are still strengthening your low back in this posture. Breathe, breathe, breathe. Push hard into your left hand and your right knee and your right foot. Left hand reaches around and captures the foot. Kick hard into your hand. Breathe, look to the right side of your mat. Look over your right shoulder. Maybe look up, 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 over your right shoulder. Keep kicking, you got it, you're strong. How is that? Good job. Let's come on down. Hand comes down, knee comes down, cat, cow. Chin to your chest, tailbone under. Inhale, cow, tailbone lifts, crown of the head lifts. Let's do a balancing pose here. Let's do bird dog. Come to a neutral tabletop, you know that. Crown of the head and tailbone like magnets going to the front and the back of the room. Breathe, hold on strong here. Lift your right leg up again, knee at about hip height, but this time draw the toes toward the shin and then extend the right leg long. Drive through your heel, think of that heel really going to the back of the room. Dial your right hip down, push hard into the earth, you got it. Add in some more extra fun balancing by extending your left arm long. Reach, lengthen, strengthen. Don't you feel really tall here? From your left fingers through your right heel, stretch, lengthen. You got it, so good for your spine, so good for your balance, so good for your brain, you got it. Finish, hand comes down, knee comes down. Lucky for us, we've got another side to do. Press into the earth, straight back. Left knee lifts. Left leg extends, left toes drawn toward the shin. Strong, solid, straight left leg. Dial the left hip down. If you want, add in the right hand and reach. If this is a challenge, don't do the arm. Or you could take one of your blocks and hold on to it at the top of your mat. It's all good. Find length, find strength. You've got it in you, yes you do. Reach, reach, stretch, push into the earth. 
and then finish. Hand comes down, knee comes down. Do a cat-cow cycle. Ah, you know this, this is an old familiar one, right? Ah, doesn't that feel good? All right, tuck your toes under. Grab your two blocks. Come to standing on your knees. This is your toes pose. We're gonna use the blocks in a moment, <laughs> as I have the blocks nearby. Sit back onto your heels. Now, if this is painful, come out of it or slip the block behind your heels. Totally fine option, lots of options. The ticket is make it work for you. Don't make yourself strive so hard to do the yoga. Let the yoga meet you exactly where you need to be. All right, so I'm sitting on my heels. Toes are bent. Whew, nice big stretch. Don't you feel it up the arch of your foot too? Nice, strong feet. Nice, strong legs. Nice, strong foundation. That's what you need, right? And we're gonna really work on that next month. And I'll tell you more about that as this month progresses. All right, so you're in your toes pose. Now we're gonna introduce the blocks. Let's go into an ankle pose. So you're really stretching your toes to their limit here. Let's take it the opposite way, a counter pose to work on the ankles holding onto your blocks at their high height. Flip your feet so the tops of your feet are on your mat, and then come back onto your heels. Let your knees come on up. This is where the blocks come in handy because they bring the ground up to you. Lift the knees on up. So get into stretching the ankles here. How often do you move your feet this way, right? All right, now you can balance here using the blocks or no blocks at all. Maybe hands to prayer center as you find the sweet spot in your ankles. You're gonna flow it a few times back and forth. You take it to the full range of motion that feels right for you. But I'm gonna come back into toes pose. So knees come down, blocks come forward, toes tuck, hips back to the heels. You can have your blocks by your side. Rest into the toes, stretch them out. Maybe the eyes are closed. You're just feeling what you feel. Ah, stay in your toes pose as long as feels right. And then go back into the ankle pose. Tops of the feet on the mat. Blocks, press into them. Let the knees come on up and stretch out your ankles. Ah, breathe. So that is a toes pose to ankle flow. Really a full range of motion in that foundation. So important. All right, let's come on down. Knees come down. Let's do our thread the needle pose. Okay, from that neutral tabletop, lift your right arm up to the sky and take a twist. Try to look up toward your right hand. Twist, 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 and then thread the needle. The right arm's the needle. Thread it under the left arm, bringing the right shoulder down to your uh, mat or to your block. The cheek, the shoulder can rest on that block. The left arm, let it go long to the top of the mat. The right arm, the needle, reach it through to the right side of your room. Adjust your knees to whatever is right for you because everybody's height is different, obviously. So you're reaching through your left fingertips to the top of the mat and your right fingertips are reaching to the left side of your mat. Shoulder is down, cheek is down on either the block or the ground. Stretch it out. Let's finish. Unthread the needle. Slide the left hand back under the left shoulder. Right hand comes out. Send it up to the sky again and look up. Look up to the hand. Is that more doable now? I bet it is. Finish up. Hands come down. Start in your neutral tabletop. Left arm, left needle. Send the left arm up to the sky. Twist, look up. Thread the needle as you exhale. Threading the left arm under the right. Right arm slips to the top. Left arm slips to the right. You come down on your right cheek. Remember to adjust your legs. Get it on down. So your arms kind of look maybe like the letter L with the right fingers reaching to the top. Left fingers reaching to the side. Shoulder down, cheek down. Nice big thread the needle pose. Let's finish. Unthread the needle. Slide the right hand back underneath the right shoulder. Left arm goes up, up, up to the sky. You twist and look up to your hands. 
to your hand, singular, and bring the right hand down, left hand down, you're back in a neutral tabletop, again, that was our thread the needle, tuck your chin to your chest, tuck your tailbone under, inhale, cow pose, let it go, all right, you know what it's time for, maybe it's time for a drink of water, or we're going to go into plank, so I think you might want to get a drink of water, all right, plank, we do these just about every day, the idea is to help you build strength in your body, have a drink of whatever you got in your water bottle. All right, for plank, I always set a one minute timer just so you can do little hacks in your head to know, hey, today I did it for five seconds. Uh, tomorrow I'll do it for 10. Maybe I'm now up to 30 seconds. Good on you. You don't have to do the plank at all. You can do the plank any way you like. I'll show you a couple and I'm gonna show you the one I'm gonna do today. Today's is challenging. All right, so you could come into a high plank. For that, shoulders over the wrists, legs go long, toes are tucked, and you press into the earth. You think of your body as a nice straight board. That's a high plank. You can stay there. Another option, spread your knees kind of wide, reach your arms more to the top of the mat, and then hinge your weight forward and hold here. You'll feel it when the weight shifts into your arms. Hold it here. Totally fine position. Another variation would be to slip down to your forearms, and that's what I'm going to do. Come down to your forearms. Have your elbow under your shoulder, fingers spread wide as you come into a forearm, also known as a dolphin plank. You can keep it on your knees or you can straighten the legs and pop on up. So what I'm going to do today, I'll show you and then you can see if you want to do it too. What I'm going to do, I'm going to pop on up to a low dolphin plank and I'm going to do hip dips. That's dipping one hip to the right, coming back to the center, dipping the other hip to the left. You stay at the center position as long as you like. Do your hip dips whenever you want to, or not at all. Take your breaks when it feels right. Let's set a timer. You watch the time. I'll keep telling you too, so you can know how you're doing. Let's do it. All right, timer starts now. Come into your variation of your plank. You're already three seconds in. Good on you. Hold it. I'm gonna do the hip dips. Hip, right hip dips to the earth. Come back to the center, left hip dips to the earth, come back to center. You're 15 seconds in. You got it. Breathe. <sighs> hip dip if you like. Hip dip if you like. Come on back up. Guess what? We are halfway there. It's already 30 some seconds. Breathe. Remember to breathe. Stay strong. You've got it. We've got about 15 seconds to go. Come down to your knees anytime you want. Hold on. We're within 10 seconds of finishing. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Done. Come on down. Whew. Have a seat. Grab a drink. How did you do? It's a challenge, isn't it? But you're strong. You can do it. Don't think. I'm too old, I'm too weak, try. That's all you gotta do. All right, next, more core stuff. So, <coughs> you can have your strap, your band. Let's start on our backs. <sighs> Come on down, fully reclined. And right, let's take a breather, a couple breaths. Couple breaths on your back, knees slightly bent. Let's do single leg bends. All right, send your left leg long, right knee bends, hug it in with your fingers. Send the right leg long, left leg, hug it in. You could use your little towel here, if you like, to hug it in. Leg goes long, hug it in on the other side. Kick it up a notch by peeling the shoulders up, hugging one knee in and extending the other leg, but not letting it touch down. Driving through the heel, tug it in and breathe. Single little leg knee huggins. <clears throat> when you're ready, let's double it up. Both knees come in, both legs extend. Shoulders can be lifted or down. 
on your mat. Oh, I'm telling you, either one, you get a good core workout. Breathe, knees hug in, legs go long. Knees hug in, legs go long. Arms can be down by your sides. Maybe that feels better. Breathe. Whew. Now let's hollow out the boat here. You could use your strap under your feet and hold on to it and extend your legs. I'm gonna have a nice little hollow flat boat today. Raising the arms overhead, legs lifted, hold here, breathe. This is your little hollow boat pose. Let it be, enjoy, enjoy. Yeah, right, enjoy. Breathe, hold it, you're strong. Hold it, you're strong. Let's finish, legs come down. Arms come down, you're automatically in a stick pose. Stretch it out here, point your toes, reach your fingers, wiggle your hips. Nice job. Now, let's do bicycle. I'm gonna press on up and I'm gonna use the band. You've got a band maybe. If you've got it, tie it around your feet. If you want to, you don't have to. This is just gonna make it a little bit harder. Want to make it really hard? You could double that band twice. I'm not gonna make it that hard today. All right, so feet are banded or not. Come all the way down again to recline. Lift your knees up over your hips, shins parallel to the sky and start to bicycle. Sending one leg long, the other leg bends. Now, you could peel your shoulders up. You could put your fingers lightly at your temples. You could work opposite knee toward opposite elbow. Breathe. Banded or not, you're getting a good little workout here. Let's finish. Remove the band, if you used it, and let's do a dead bug. All right, so this is kind of fun. Lift your legs up to the sky, nice and high. Heels to the sky, toes toward your shins. Press your hands into your legs. Press your hands into your thighs. Hold it here for a second or two. Drive the toes more overhead. Now lift your arms up so your body looks like the letter U. This is a little bit of brain yoga. <laughs> this is a challenge for me. Lift here through your fingers and your heels. Now lower your left heel and your right arm down. Stretch. We'll bring them on back up. Other side, right leg comes down, left arm goes down. Can you get the arm all the way down? How's that shoulder? Come on back up and then alternate. Opposite arm, opposite leg, comes down and then back up to the starting position. <sighs> Breathe. You're strong. You're not only working the shoulders here, but think of your strong core. Think of your strong hip flexors. It's your strong core that's pulling that leg up. Breathe. Let's come back to the starting position with all four limbs lifted up to the sky. Now bend your knees so your shins are parallel to the sky. Take your two hands, press them into your thighs. Draw your toes towards your shins. Push into the thighs and push the thighs back into your hands. Breathe here and let's finish. Legs come down, come into a pentacle pose. Pentacle pose, you're lying down, arms come up overhead, legs spread wide, your body looks like a big letter X. Remember this pose, because we're gonna possibly come back to it. Breathe here. <clears throat> this is a little reset for your body. Reset and breathe. Big breath in <sighs> and big breath out. Remember your pentacle and how to do it. Arms down by your sides, legs back together, press on up. Let's come on to standing on our knees. Now, how do your hips feel? You're probably feeling them in the hip flexors. We did a lot uh, just a moment ago with that little sequence. Bring your two blocks by your side, shoulders over your hips, right foot comes forward, knee over ankle, send your left leg long. Now stretch out that hip flexor. This feels good, doesn't it? Place the top of your left foot on your mat, hands on your blocks or maybe shoulders over your hips just stretch it out and hang out here we're not going to surf it today unless you want to but just let this settle in the feeling in your left hip maybe drive your left toes more to the back of the room breathe here <sighs> maybe it feels better to bring your shoulders more back maybe you like to bring your hands on your hips and lift your chest up to the sky we're all about that left hip flexor right now 
find the depth here. No rush, no hurry. This is as far as we're going to take it today. We'll take it farther another day, and we'll do different variations another day. All right, when you're ready, finish up. Hands back to the blocks. Send the right knee to meet the left and take it to the other side. Left foot comes forward, knee over the left ankle. Push into the blocks to let your right leg go long. How did that feel? Doesn't that feel really good? Should feel good. And if it doesn't feel good, adjust so it does. Right leg is long. Wiggle the toes to the bottom of your mat. Maybe your hands stay on the block. Maybe you press a little on up. <sighs> Settle in. Breathe. Think about that big band in front of that right hip. How it helps you move your hips. How it helps you lift your leg when you go up and down stairs. Think of how strong that is. Think of the mobility in that hip. Maybe bring your hands to your hips. Chest lifts to the sky. How does that feel? A couple of breaths. Press into that left foot. Breathe. How do you like it? All right, let's finish up. Hands back to your blocks. Let's come to standing on your knees. Let's take a gentle little camel one more time for your hips. Send your hands to your low back, uh, fingers pointing down, elbows squeezed towards your spine. Look up to the sky. Oh, just let that feel good. Finish. Shoulders over hips. Come on down. Have a seat. Send your legs long. Draw your toes up towards your shins. Lift your arms high up to the sky. Reach forward with your two parallel arms. Reach, stretch, feel the goodness in your low back. Big breath in. Big breath out, hollow belly lets you reach further forward. Reach down, capture your calves, your ankles, whatever you can reach. Today I'm gonna drape my hands over my feet. I'm gonna have my tops of my toes touch my wrists. Little bend in the knees is fine. The sole of the foot to the palm of the hand. Gaze down to the knees, pulling the feet back. <sighs> Breathe. Finish up, shoulders over your hips. All right, so send your legs wide, wide-legged forward fold. Bring your two blocks in between your legs. Toes up to the sky, hinge a little forward on whatever height you like your blocks to be. Maybe your head comes down to the blocks. Ah, nice stretch in the inner thighs. Breathe. This is your wide-legged forward fold. All right, so you got a choice. How do you like the wide-legged forward fold? You know, the longer you stay here, the deeper you can get into it. Maybe that's where you want to stay. Or, remember how we did pentacle a moment ago? If you want to go back into pentacle, do that. I'm going to come up and do two standing poses. A little different variation on tree today, but just to get a little bit of balancing in because it's so important. So your choice, stand with me, stay in your wide-legged forward, for, wide forward fold, or go back to pentacle. All right, I'm going to come out of this. Legs come together. I'm going to come on up to a standing position. In the standing position, very familiar pose. You will look taller. Legs zipped up. Think the YMCA song. Bring your body into the letter Y. Press the backs of your hands to the back of the room. Good, strong, tall standing posture. Reach through the fingers. Fingers spread wide. Backs of the hands as far back as you can take them to the back wall. Bring your arms into the letter shape W. Elbows down. Press the backs of the hands to the back of the room. Strengthen your upper spine. L for the letter for the word look. Draw your elbows in. Forearms parallel to the earth. T for taller. Pulse the backs of your hands to the back of the room. Let's do it again. You will look taller. Pulse, pulse, pulse. One more time. Third time's the charm. You will look taller, taller, taller. You got it. Arms down by your sides. Close your eyes for a moment. Feel the strength in the shoulders over the hips. Crown of the head lengthens up nice and tall and straight. You have good posture. Let's do tree. Blink your eyes open. All right, variation of tree pose today. Classic tree combined with our palm tree. Let's do it. Root into your left foot, right foot lifts. Open up the right knee to the side of the room. Place the sole of the right foot wherever you like. You could have a chair here and stay right here. There's your good balancing. 
You can bring the foot higher, just don't place it onto the knee. Press the foot into the leg and the leg into the foot. Back uh, outside of the right knee to the back of the room. Arms, classic tree, you lift them up and sway your branches. Today, a little different. Interlace your fingers overhead. You gotta concentrate on this one. Look forward, look up to where the ceiling and the wall meet. Send your palms up to the sky. Like a palm tree, gently sway from side to side, real gentle, right? You're rooting into that left foot, pushing the right foot into the left leg and the leg back into the foot. Find your excellent balance here. Let's finish. Come back. Palms lift high to the sky. Place your, uh, bring your right knee around. Place your right foot down. Arms down by your sides. Let it go. Other side. Root into the other leg. I'm going to root into my right leg. Open up the left leg to the side of the room. Chair is fine for balance. Nobody's judging you. Don't judge yourself. Foot into leg. Leg into foot. Hips equal distant to the front of the room. Grow your branches like you normally do. That's a comfortable pose. If you fall out, get right back in. Nobody's perfect. And what's perfect anyway? All right. Grow your branches or interlace your fingers overhead. Send your palms up to the sky and take your little palm tree variation here. Little gentle sways. It isn't easy. It's different. Your brain's going, what's going on right now? Let's finish up. All right, palms, press them high to the sky, root into that strong foot. Bring your hands to prayer center, guide the left knee to the front of the room, left foot meets right on the mat. That's it. Let's fold forward, capture our calves, and then we're gonna work our way down to our mat to meet our friends who stayed down here. Elbows hugged in, hands to your calves. Fold forward as best you can. Little bend in your knees feels mighty good. Release your hands to your mat. Bend your knees and come on down. Let's all make our way onto our right side. Come onto your right side in a fetal position. <coughs> in the legs. You're on your right hip, knees are bent. Come on down to your right shoulder, but let your right arm be long. Let your head rest on your mat. You know, if it might feel better to put a block under there. All right, so right arm is reaching long to the front of the room, your knees are bent. Left hand, have it meet your right palm. Let's do an open book here. All right, so you're in a fetal position. Your hands are touching, let's open up. Left hand, the one on top, slide it across your right forearm, up across the bicep, up across your collarbones. Open it up as far as is comfortable for you to the left. Let the left shoulder come down closer to the earth, but keep your hips twisted. You're looking up to the sky. Relax in that left shoulder, the top shoulder. Maybe look to the left. Breathe. Come on, bring it on. Left arm back up nice and straight. Palms touch. Let's do it again. Left hand slides across the chest. All the way open up. Look to the left. Breathe here. One more time. Left arm comes up, up, up. Left hand meets the right hand on the ground. Open it up as far as is right for you. Bring the left arm up, palms touch again. Roll onto your left hip. Just roll on over to the other side. I'm gonna switch so my bottom's not facing the camera. All right, so now you're on your left hip. Left arm is long on the ground, right arm meet, meets it. Head is down or on a block. Right arm on top now, slides across your chest. Open up to the right. Maybe this side feels different than the other one. Just, you know, don't judge, just be aware. Breathe. Soften in your right shoulder. Right arm nice and straight. Lift it on up, up, up to the sky. So you're kind of creating a little half circle over your body here with the right arm. Palms touch. Do it again. Slide the hand across the body like an open book. Gaze to the right. Arm lifts. Palms touch. This is pretty incredible that you're doing this. However far you're taking it, it's good. All right. Last time, open up, breathe, look to the right, right shoulder down as best you can, and then let's finish up. Roll onto your bottom, arms go high overhead, I'm going to switch around. Come into that pentacle pose, 
Pentacle pose. Backs of your hands are on your mat. Let's do a snow angel here. All right, pay attention to where your shoulders are tight. And then if it's tight, stop there for a breath and just hold it. So legs spread wide, arms high overhead, pentacle. Draw your legs together, bring your arms down by your sides, keeping your uh, backs of your hands on the mat as best you can. And just do a snow angel like you're 10 years old again. Send the heels wide, arms lift, and find where it's tight. Oh, maybe you got a tight spot there. Soften and breathe. And then take it a little higher. Maybe you get the thumbs to touch overhead. Snow angel it a couple of times. You got it. Keep the hands down. Stop where it's tight. Breathe. And then take it a little more. Maybe that's as far as you go. See what works for you. Keep the shoulders down. Nice range of motion in the shoulders. Breathe. Finish up with your snow angel. All right. Now let's go into a reclined pigeon. Bend your right knee. Right knee. Hug the right knee in. Squeeze it in. Plant the right leg down. Bend the right knee. Right leg comes down. So the right knee's bent. Lift your left leg up. Bend the left knee outside of the left knee on top of the right knee. Open up, push your inner left thigh open. Maybe scoot your right heel up a little closer to your bottom. Push the left thigh open. Breathe. Let's finish. Send both legs long on your mat. Both legs are long. Let's bend the opposite leg. So I'm going to bend the left leg this time. Drive through the right heel. Bend the left knee. Hug the left knee in. Hug it in, hug it in. You've got mobility in your hips. Encourage it even more. Plant the left foot down. Bend the right knee now. Bend the right knee. Bring the outside of the right ankle on top of the left knee. Using your hands, your own body is your best prop. Push into the right thigh. Maybe scoot the left heel up a little closer to your bottom. Breathe. Finish up. Both feet come down with the knees bent. Let's go into a bridge pose. Knees are over your ankles. Knees are in line with your hips. Arms down. Push into your feet. Send your hips high. Let it feel nice. Wiggle your shoulders closer to your spine. Push into your feet. <sighs> bridge pose. Back into those hip flexors again. Are your, are your glutes really tightly squeezed? Yeah, mine are. They tend to do that. Soften them and then find the power in these big strong legs of yours. Find the power in the legs. Push harder into your feet. Let your bottom relax. Now go back to it. Squeeze your bottom tighter. Lift your hips higher. Breathe. Cat cow, think the opposite. Think of your spine, your vertebra, one at a time coming on down to the mat. Think of like a pearl necklace in the spine, letting each bead come down. Your tailbone, you want to keep it tucked to your navel, keeping it tucked and lifted until you get all the way down. And all the way down is farther than you think. Keep it tucked. Hold on tight. Bring it all the way down. Keep it tucked. It's still tucked. And once you get down, then release the tailbone. It just feels really, really good. All right, let's come into our final Shavasana pose. Little back massage first. Tuck your left knee to your left armpit, right knee to your right armpit, and rock a little bit from side to side. Really rock it today. So this is how we usually come into a happy baby, but today it's just a low back massage. Let both knees fall to one side. Using your strong core, bring them back up and roll it to the other side. Ah, <sighs> Breathe. Let it feel good. One side, then the other. And how do you like that? Feels really good, doesn't it? Should feel good. You gotta find all these little tricks throughout your day to feel really good in your body. Your one and only body, treat it right. All right, let's come back to stillness at the midline of your body. That tailbone is down on your mat. Bring your heels on down, find your eye shade or your little towel, and let's come into final Shavasana. But today, let's take our two blocks, bring them to the bottom of your mat, put them underneath your calves or your heels, just so your feet are a little bit lifted. Kind of just feels nice on your low back. Cover your eyes with your eye shade or your little hand towel. 
arms down by your sides. <sighs> Find peace. <sighs> Come back to your breath. Keep the thoughts away. Remember, you want to focus inward. Tune out the noise of the world. Filter out the outside. Stay within for just a little bit longer. <sighs> Deepen your breaths. Soften the area between your eyebrows. Unclench your jaws if your teeth are touching. Remove the tongue from the roof of your mouth. <sighs> Shoulders are relaxed into the earth. Draw them back and down. Deepen your breaths a little bit more and let's place some extra emphasis on the exhale. To do that, take a deep breath in and let's do our straw breathing. So deep breath in, fills your belly up and your chest up. And when you're ready to exhale, purse your lips like you're sipping out of a little teeny cocktail straw. And let the air out of your mouth slowly, gradually through that teeny little straw. it all out and repeat deep slow full long exhales relax the body deep inhale through the nose big exhale through your little lips Stay here longer if you like. You deserve the time to feel good. If it's time to finish up your hour, start to wiggle your fingers and toes. We worked them a lot today. Move your ankles about. Move your wrists about. Just move them. Finish up. Reach and take a big good morning stretch. High overhead. Fingers go long. Kick your blocks aside. Point your toes. Just be long. Exhale, bend your elbows, bend your knees, roll into a fetal position onto one side or the other. Use your low arms, bicep is a pillow for your head. Soften in your top shoulder. Savor the breath here. This is one of my favorite moments in the practice. Close your eyes, deep breath in, deep breath out. You're putting a little bow on this practice, just letting it all go. As you're ready, Maybe keep the eyes closed, use your hands or not, push on up to a seated position. Remember, whatever's comfortable in your legs is just right. Hands to prayer center, that's always a good place to be. Thumbs in toward your chest, fingers up toward the sky. Shoulders are soft and away from the ears. Big inhale lengthens up your spine from the tailbone all the way up through the crown of your head. Big exhale, retrace the breath. Sigh it out your mouth, soften your shoulders, and root into that firm foundation beneath you. Blink your eyes open. You did it. One hour, 1 24th of your day. How do you feel? 
The good thing about this, first you think, oh gosh, an hour is so long. But the good thing about it is you're setting the course of the rest of your day to feel good. Turn your head, turn your neck, move your shoulders. How do your hips feel? Don't you feel better? And it's always better to approach your day feeling better in your body. So do your yoga every day. Come back every single day. Stress number, one to five, one to 10, whatever your scale was. Hi, <laughs> what is it now? I guarantee it's a lot lower. Stick with your yoga. See you on your mat tomorrow. Have a good day. Love from Bonnie and Piper and Dwayne and me. See you tomorrow. Bye. Namaste. Hey, what's up? How are you, good girl? You're just a good yoga girl. You're just a good yoga girl. Yes, you are. Stay in the actions and out of the results. The results will take care of themselves. Just keep coming back, doing your yoga, and enjoying yourself and having fun. Our yoga is free for anybody and everybody. So tell your friends about the great things that the yoga is doing for you. If you'd like to support our broadcast, you can go to our website. It's www.316yoga.com. Stay strong, stay focused, and stay in the action. And the results will take care of themselves. See you on your mats tomorrow.